here to talk to you on what is Kamni Rao and I am a person who is very driven and I would like to bring in a few points here on revolutionizing reproductive health care. I have always been a person who looks for opportunities and there are three or two kinds of three kinds of people one where opportunities are there and you walk on it there are others where opportunities are thrust on them and then you take it but I come in a third category where I create opportunities and then I actually pick those opportunities so with my uh, talk today I consistently project my thinking five years in advance and then start working backwards. It's important for all the youngsters today to understand whenever I ask them, uh, what are you going to do, ma'am? Let me finish my 10th standard, let me finish my MBBS, uh, let me finish my post-graduation, then I will see. The answer is no, my friend. You can't go to the edge of the road and then say, now what I will do because you waste a lot of time. I always believed if five years down the line I want to be practicing something then what do I do in preparation I should start doing five years before and that is how I made my moves in my life and therefore I slipped in from one role to the next role and to the next role. My friends don't ever feel afraid to fail and I have never feared failure and I have always faced failure with an open mind and this is my school my early days in school and the turning point in my life was when I was a very average student in fact I didn't learn how to talk even till I was two and a half and my mother wondered whether I was a little mentally retarded and so they took me across to the speech and hearing institute and then of course they said everything was normal because in those days they didn't have too much of uh, you know intricate um, diagnosis and then they said this girl is not going to do anything so she, my mother gave up on me because of the five children I was the middle one and then I never wanted to go to school so my father who was then the director of health services and he would take us to school drop us in school so that was the beginning and then when I reached the seventh standard we had an elocution competition where in the school they would pick up the names at random and they would ask us to talk for three minutes in the center of a hall and the topic would be just given at random and every time we would sit there and at this thing and it would be done once in a year I would pray to God that my name would not be picked up and lo and behold on this one unfortunate or fortunate occasion my name got picked up and then I had to pick from that box the topic and I picked that and it was a very simple topic Mahatma Gandhi Imagine all of you can talk on Mahatma Gandhi for three minutes. I walked gingerly to the center of the hall and I looked at that paper and the mic in front of me and then I told myself completely blank. Mahatma Gandhi. I had, and then they rang the bell and they started and I looked around, everyone looked around and then I had some jeers, I had some laughter but I just held on to the stem of the mic. I didn't move, rooted to the ground. I couldn't open my mouth. And that is what made a difference to me. I went home, then I burst into tears, but not in front of my parents or anyone. I went into the room. I took a belt, my father's belt, and I hit myself that why did I not do? And that self-realization has to come within you. No other person can tell you. I hit myself. I said, next time you have to talk. Being an introvert and being shy will not help you to get 
anywhere you want to unless you communicate and that is what it did to me and bishop cotton school was a place that was the defining moment and i am very happy to say that when i had the padma shri i had the entire school with the school band playing the school song and i was one of the uh, prize of that school where the principal honored me and i told myself and i told the students of that school that i was once a failure and i came up so if i can do it all of you can do it and therefore do not be afraid to fail okay and the next was in st john's medical college where you must believe in yourself and you are halfway there going through st john's medical college through entire this thing i landed up with having a big lump in my back and those days they told me i had cancer in the spine but in my mind i was planning i have 5 years but in that 5 years what can i do if my spine doesn't work and my legs get paralyzed or my brain is still normal so can i do something so i was looking at it very positively so i had a tailor's brace and then i was able to do a lot of work and believe me when i came back and then they started looking at it the diagnosis for one month remained as cancer and when they took out the biopsy it was tuberculosis of the spine so many one person from a cancer to being a tuberculosis was a relief to everybody i was on tuberculosis treatment but i had this kind of pots fracture so i had to be in bed for 6 months the uh, hospital that is the academy the dean himself said such a bright child we can't keep her behind attendance was also waived and i came third in class in that same this thing without losing attendance if you say to god why me i always replied to god as try me and i will succeed and of course i moved to london believe me even before going to london when i did my pg i was in first in the state but believe me those are the days i cherish because it taught me how to really roughen up and sleep and to go across to the interviews and i got the job as well so those are the defining moments in my life that i will never forget and it helps us to realize what other students also go through because i learned to value money and i was able to eat in the nurses hostel and to be able to save money to do my exams so spread your wings for the world is your classroom so i learned at every the thing it was almost 360 degrees and therefore what i learned as experience not only medicine but experience of life and that's what i want to tell you i had a very defining moment in london where three or four north indian ladies came and spoke to me crying that they were doing ivf and my clinic used to be really i was the junior consultant there and they said what are you sitting down and doing as a second class citizen and you can speak our language why don't you go back to india and help all of us because here we neither understand the language and we have failed twice and we don't understand why and the doctors don't explain then i told myself what they say is right within a week of that i had resigned from uk i just came back to india i have never looked back and i set up this particular institution called bangalore assisted conception center and that was done in 1989 and with 39 years of service i have been able to help tens of thousands or lakhs of couples to get pregnant and believe me that was the defining moment where i never looked back and i started that and after the 6 months with one ectopic pregnancy after 6 months and then all hell broke loose pregnancy started coming patients started coming and believe me ivf was there to stay and then once that started coming i started writing books i started training people and 
today the institution is so big that all over the country and abroad you will find a student of mine or a colleague of mine who has been touched or been influenced by me and that my dear friends is the kind of value I like rather than the money you make in earning from anything else. I have written over 52 textbooks which have now been in the curriculum of the MD as well as the fellowship for the national boards, been an outstanding teacher award, have had all the awards given. So if you look at the milestones that I have, I have never stopped. I've had a research institute, IRRH, and there is 39 years experience in my kitty and all these things have come. But did I stop here? Okay, my legs may not move, but I landed up with the Kamni Rao masterclass with the help of my daughter, Pooja. And so we started getting ordinary people who became extraordinary. And then I started talking to them and you'll be surprised at the types of people I got. Uh, Justice Santosh Hegare, and of course you'll see, these are of course my timelines, but anyway, these are all the places where I got all the awards, Federation as well as FIGO is the international body where I got the outstanding gynecologist award in the world, okay? And this is where my dis determination was, and this is where the awards that I got, many more. And of course, this is my masterclass. And of course, there's an online training program. I've got basic programs. I've always felt, I mean, in a classroom, I can only train about 27 fellows, or I can do this. Why not do an online program? So with Pooja and myself doing the midline programs, we have been able to get a large number of students training with me. All my lectures are now encrypted, recorded, so that a large number of students can come online and listen and believe me that is the most heartening moment for me that a lot of these online programs are being done so whether I'm there or not these things are going to be continued by my family and all my students all over the world so my dear friends from a daughter to a doctor wife to a mother and now a woman entrepreneur shaping tomorrow's leaders and empowering society. So if anyone asks me, oh, I can't do that because impossible is not found in my dictionary. I will always find and permanency is never there. Good times come, bad times come, but they don't last. You have to wait and you have to seize opportunities or create opportunities and seize them. Thank you very much.